Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's Mark from Power Sonic and Apprentice One to One. Couple of really interesting jobs to show you today. First up is a fire damaged property. So we've had a fire that's taken out the consumer unit, caused a lot of damage. That's as much information as I have at the minute. We've been asked to come along and provide some electrical readings for the fire inspector. So we can go and do that um, and I'll show you the outcome potentially, hopefully, be able to tell you what the cause of the fire was and also some of the um, effects the electrical system might have had on that. We've also then, after that, later on this afternoon, got a trip in RCD, um, so we can go and have a look at that one as well. It's um, randomly and intermittently doing it, which is always a nice one to jump out and check out. And with that, my best advice I can ever give to anybody is don't start panicking with your faults. It's easy to jump in and start taking socket fronts off, spares apart. Start with the basics, start at the beginning, go through the consumer unit first and see exactly what is going on. Um, so check check basically if you've got um, leakage current through the air thin um, so you know if it's a fault affecting the RCD. Do your ramp test on the RCD as well and then work out from there. And eventually you will come to the culprit. Uh, it's just one of those things, slow but steady. Uh, and obviously on your socket circuits, if you've got to that stage and you've got some leakage current present, make sure you actually unplug everything. But we'll go through it later on in the video. Let's get straight to the action. Out on site looking at this fire damaged um, property. Catch up with you in a bit. Okay, so I wasn't able to record in the usual way I would out on site um, with audio. There was too many people there, it was too noisy. So I'm going to voice it over and just run through some of the footage I got and talk you through some of the pictures and what I'd actually found. So we'll get straight on with that, you should see me shrink down. This is the garage we walked into, so it was burnt to a crisp, properly um, gutted. And uh, yeah, the, the source of the fire we'll get to later on in the video, but this is what we walked in on. The back of the garage, there is a separate uh, store area, just of a similar size, so it's not just that building that was burnt out. You see here the downstairs ring final circuit had tripped and the garage had been taken from that um, you know, and, and out as a feed to the garage as well. So there was quite a substantial load on that MCB. We'll jump back to that in a bit. Here you can see me just checking what we've got at the um, intake. And again, I realise I'm not measuring ZE there because the bonds are still connected. Is What I am doing is checking what we've got in terms of PFC and PSC and also the impedance between the line and neutral and the line and the earth. And obviously disconnect the main incoming earth and get a measurement as well. And what I was kind of left with on the ZE was 0 0.26 ohms, it's a TNCS head, so that wasn't really screaming out anything of significance. Um, but there is an issue within that consumer unit and we'll jump back to that in a bit. Um, this is just me showing off to Matthew really because I pinched his probe that he managed to obtain and I've been using it while he's on holiday. So here you'll see the socket and this is where they've taken the spare out where it's not even a spare, they'd wire directly into the back of the socket out to the garage. Now, it was in 4mm steel wire armour cable and it had been taken uh, underground and then popped up into the garage to be divided into, uh, I think it's four circuits out there to distribute around the, the two separate garages. So as I said, there's like a store and a garage at the back and then the front garage which has had the fire. Now, um, it had just been wired straight into the back. There was no way of isolating it separately. And this was one of the reasons the homeowner was keen for us to attend at the same time as the fire investigator, because they wanted them to say, yeah, you know, it's okay. You can restart power onto that circuit. It's not part of the actual problem. And we've tested it as well and obtained all the values that they need. So the fire investigator had asked for some values with on, the on the electrical system to help him determine the cause of the fire and submit his report. So we needed to give him those values and then make some corrective work so they could get the heating back on and have some power in the kitchen. So as I said, that downstairs ring final circuit did every single socket downstairs. So you've got all the power in the kitchen, the boiler, and then out at the garage where they had, you know, a reasonable load out there as well. There was fridge freezers, tumble dryers. There's even like a plug-in 230 volt welder. Um, that they used extensively when they're messing around with vehicles that they that they play around with. And um, there's been quite a considerable load on that circuit over a number of years. And we'll get back to that in a, in a minute. Now, obviously when we've rectified that work, you go off and carry out some further tests. Um, and upon measuring for a loop impedance value at this socket front, so obviously we've disconnected the, the garage. We're happy that that's safely isolated. Earth down in where it goes. 
you know, we can then do some dead test measurements on this circuit and then the live test. And it, when I went to do a loop measurement that I realized we might have an issue because it started measuring um, quite a high value. And obviously there's no RCD in this circuit anywhere, which is another issue altogether. I'm not going to delve into that too far. Um, but the value is measuring several ohms way beyond the max ZS for that particular MCB. And that's what you'll often find on old MCBs. They do wear out, especially ones that are rated, or so, sorry, loaded towards their maximum value over decades. You know, these things aren't going to last forever. And that's why taking a, a loop measurement at pendant fittings that are old and at socket fronts that are old is really valuable because it actually shows you the true impedance path through all of the connected equipment. It's something I keep repeating. Um, and I've said this on numerous other videos. You know, we often go on about Rig 14 and keeping ourselves safe. Totally, you must do that. And you can do that while you're doing ZS measurements. But equally, you're not complying with the other regs within the Electricity at Work Regulations 1989 if you're not leaving safe electrical systems for people to use as the inspector or the person who's installing it. You have a responsibility there. And doing something simple like a loop impedance measurement is one of the most insightful tests you can take, in my opinion, um, along with your insulation resistance. So obviously when I've done that and I've measured this value straight away, I'm thinking there's a problem somewhere on a termination on the, the circuit. And as I said at the start of this video, when you are doing fault finding, it's really important that you keep it basic and start at the beginning. Always start at the beginning. So. I went off to the MCB and measured the impedance straight through that and again, really high, that was the culprit. So I got that swapped out because obviously that's causing a problem as well. And uh, then managed to obtain a loop value as shown here which is more acceptable, that's kind of what we'd want to see and it tallied in with the dead test measurements. We was able to get the heating back on which is happy days for the customer. Uh, and then this again is some pictures of the fire damaged garage. Um, and yeah, just, just to really talk about that, the fire investigator had decided they're quite confident, 99% confident that the fire started in a fridge freezer within the garage. Um, he believes a contributing factor was definitely the high earth fault loop impedance within that circuit. There'd been a recent EICR done where the calculation method, as I term it and as it's termed within guidance note 3, which is your ZE plus your R1, R2, um, showed that circuit to be satisfactory as regards earth fault loop impedance and when I took dead measurement it tallied up very much with what they'd said there'd been other advice given in that report around the uh, recommendation of RCDs and um, some of the other values that were within it I did reference and check upon my visit and I was happy that they were accurate so this is just somebody who'd taken a, a, an option within the wire and regulations and within guidance note 3 to fulfill their their work and they're allowed to do that. Now it's pure speculation as to if that value of ZS once taken at that point, it was only, I think it was six and a bit months prior to this fire, um, if that it had been excessively high then. You know, if an RCD would have tripped out in the event of this fridge freezer developing a fault, um, obviously there's loads of ways that that appliance could, you know, become faulty. Obviously it's in an unheated space, which is never ideal for a fridge freezer because you very rarely get the temperature within the structure to affect the um, fridge freezer to operate as it normally would. You know, it's going to be freezing through the course of winter um, in there. So, you know, it's never ideal to do that. Uh, and equally, they sometimes have the, the plastic components that start melting. If we think back to Grenfell and what the actual issue was there that started all of that off, I mean, I think it was traced back to a fridge freezer and something to do with the material around the terminations within it catching fire. Um, yeah, so it's one of those. My own personal opinion is that that impedance value was too high, which would prevent the fuse the in the plug top, the um, MCB from operating. Um, and obviously there was no RCD on the circuit anyway. So it's all been this chain of events and that's the end result. So I want if anything, you to look at that picture and, and understand that when I'm, you know, leaning on this from the point of view of making yourself safe while you carry out loop impedance measurements and understand what you're doing is what I don't want is somebody who hasn't been trained in doing live testing to ever attempt to do it. I think it's an absolute tragedy that um, training centres aren't showing people this and it's been left for employers to instruct 
um, electricians in how to do it and train them in how to do it when often they're not qualified teachers you know it's just a case of people passing on their experience uh, I think that's something we really need to look at as an industry because you know we can improve safety in homes and in commercial premises by being able to do a very very simple test and it's not just on socket circuits either um, and I've demonstrated how to do that quite safely on numerous videos so I'm not going to go over that again but yeah, that was kind of an interesting one to look at. I hope you found that mildly uh, enlightening. And we'll jump on and look at the other fault finding video I've managed to string together as well and see where we've got on with that one. Um, this is now going to be, I mean, nothing will result from this. The fire officer will make the um, report to show that it was a faulty electrical appliance that caused the fire. Um, you know, there was no fraudulent activity from the occupiers and it wasn't arson essentially. So the insurers can then pay out for the repair work and that's very very common that that's the, the the long and short of it just, just gets passed into statistics just gets passed into statistics stuttering away there with my words and um you know it's not nothing changes it just carries on and on and on um, you know we need to look at this we need to look at the the quality of the inspectors and i'm not saying that the people who did that report were of a good quality i couldn't find any real issue inside there with the other recommendations and results that they'd provided but certainly the processes we use and the um, the methods we state as preferred. Um, and as I said on the electrician's show quite recently, that only just changed. So in the 17th edition Amendment 3, um, it was your preferences to if you chose live measurement or dead measurement when I'm turning ZS. Now it's preferred to calculate. Um, and I think that's wrong. I think it should be up to the inspector to decide. Um, without being influenced with a terminology used within a book that's guidance. Um, yeah, I think that's a, a big problem that we should look at, just a personal opinion. But I will move on with the video now. I've got some other footage from the other job, and we'll go and check that one out. Okay, same again to start this one off. It is just me voicing over, but I did get some audio on the site as well. Um, let's jump straight to it. We'll cut me down into the top corner again, and this is a tripping RCD. Obviously this is the garage, so the RCD is in the house and um, this is where I have suspect we've got the problem because there's an MCB in the off position. Always a bit of a um, point in the right direction when you've got something that's tripped. They've managed to restore power onto the RCD with that tripped. Uh, so on opening up that consumer unit you can see there's a steel wire armour going up the wall there and that shoots off to the back of the garage and I'd, I'd assumed it went into a shed but that turned out not to be the case. Uh, you'll see me run through some testing now. Okay, so I've disconnected off the circuit that we think is going off to an old redundant pond. Um, I'm now checking for insulation resistance between the neutral and the CPC that's on that steel wire armor cable you'll see there. Um, I've already run through the test, so I know what's gonna happen, but I'll show you guys. If we pop it on to test, you'll see that's 500 volts between your uh, neutral in the CPC and we've got 0 0.03 mega. If I leave it on the CPC and we'll have a look to line as well. And again, measure away. See a similar sort of value. And that's between the line and the CPC and then just to do between the line and the neutral as well. You can see that on there. Let's zoom out a touch. And then we'll have a little look on the old tester. see we've got pretty much dead shot there as well um, what we think has happened is the person who's removed the pond just turned the breaker off and then covered the end over in the ground um, quite how they've covered it we don't know so obviously it's buried hopefully it's in a resin joint of some sort but it's obviously got moisture in it and is now effectively shorted between all the conductors so I'm gonna properly take this out of the board remove it get rid of it and hopefully the RCD in the house will start to test their tripping but we can have a look in there as well and see what we've got on the main board inside. Okay, so that was the fault out at the garage. Pretty happy that that was the issue there. And as I said, been able to go and see an MCB in off position and then have the homeowner telling you they've been able to restore power. And that's often a good indication you're onto a winner straight away, isn't it? So I was happy with that. But I did go off inside and make sure we checked exactly what was going on. So I'll zoom myself down now and you'll see here I've got the um, TIS DCAC clamp meter out and I'm just checking what the... DC value is there and now having a look at the AC value. So this is the consumer unit. Um, you know, it's not horrifically dressed. 
split load 16th edition board and I've just got that meter around the line and neutral there checking any DC current that's flowing for blinding and also what the leakage current is. Here you'll see on the test instrument I've just gone off and taken a value of ZS and badly filmed and again this is the footage out at the garage consumer unit um, doing the IR test one of the most powerful tests you can do when you've got a tripping RCD and you're trying to fault find. So if this hadn't had a tripped MCB and I'd had that point in the right direction, start at the consumer unit, um, the, the, the one at the source, so in the house, um, see what current you've got flowing within the earthing conductor if the RCD is currently holding. Um, you can do that by measuring, between, measuring with your line of neutral through the clamp meter or just clamping around the earth itself. Um, and then obviously you can run through your circuits, trip them off one at a time and see where that uh, leakage current drops away, if there is any. Now if you're at that stage and there's no leakage current, um, so potentially no fault on the system but the RCD is still intermittently operating, you can then do a ramp test. And, and I did a ramp test on this board um, in the house. And it was it was actually quite high. It's one of the highest values I've ever measured. It was sort of twenty nine and a half milliamps, and it did that consistently every time the old Legrand split load board. Um, so yeah, that's pushing its limits. But it did give me good confidence that we'd kind of found the fault. It was that cable. It was an old pond supply that's probably buried under the lawn somewhere. Hopefully with a resin joint on the end of it, but who knows. Um, and yeah, it's just obviously allowed moisture into itself um, and causing an issue with the RCD that's upstream of all of this, uh, which obviously had the kitchen sockets on and the cooker and everything else. So it was causing a bit of a nuisance. It started doing it sort of once every two or three days, and then it was getting to the stage where it was um, two or three times a day, and they just had the driveway relayed and they're kind of wondering if there'd been something going on there with the work that had been done outside um, that tallied in with this but uh, doesn't look to be the case. We've made the recommendation of swapping over to an RCBO consumer unit in the house and also fully testing the system that's in there. Um, you know, it's gonna be better for them if there's a fault on the, on the electrical system. This is one of the things we talk about all the time is if split load boards actually comply with the regulations. And I know we've had the debate and the discussion and um, you know, generally it's accepted that they do because in the guidance documents, it tells us that they do as long as there's more than one RCD, you've got some division of, of circuits, I guess. But it seems like a ridiculous way to keep doing things now when RCBOs are so readily available and low cost. Um, so yeah, we've put that forward and they're very, very keen on having that done, having experienced what happens with an earth fault that's actually on a redundant circuit, but turning the majority of the power off in the house. It's very, very irritating for consumers. So when you stood there trying to explain to somebody after an EICR, for example, and they've got a 16th edition board and they've never had a problem with an RCD tripping or a 17th edition split load board, you know, it's a hard sell. But when somebody's actually gone through it and they don't think you're just trying to try it on and make some extra money out of them swapping fuse boxes for fun, they see the value in it. So yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing to experience when you go out fault finding. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll just carry on this video because I don't know if other electricians who've got dogs of their own ever come across this but my dog was not happy with me after coming home from these two jobs because both had pet dogs and they'd all been sniffing around my work bags and around me and he gave me a good sniffing over and all of my stuff for quite a while after getting home actually I think he thinks I go off playing with all these other friends of his and leave him at home all on his own so he's going to be sulking now um yeah it's always poor old dogs they get left at home all day and probably think we're out having loads of fun without them Otherwise, thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments about any of this and you want to get involved in the discussion, as always, drop them in below. I'm happy to join in and answer what I can. Otherwise, thank you all for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please give a thumbs up. If it's not for you, a thumbs down. And I will catch you all on the next one. Thank you.